Hey, welcome to ForConstructionPros.com's 10 Hottest Stories of the Week. These are the stories that contractors are reading. I'm Larry Stewart with ForConstructionPros.com. And I am Jessica Lombardo with Asphalt Contractor Magazine. And I'm going to start today with number 10. The number 10 story that was most read this week was what workforce challenges are ahead for key construction industry segments. So as the industry slowly starts to recover from pandemic-related disruptions, the lingering effects of these setbacks are going to continue to unsettle the industry's workforce for much of 2021. From residential to commercial projects, hiring and infrastructure funding, Patrick Jones from Orion Talent, he gives readers a look at what the year ahead will bring for construction companies. And number nine on the list is the 2021 Ram 1500 being the only pickup to earn the 2021 IIHS top safety pick rating. Ram 1500 was the first pickup to achieve the top safety rating. And this is its back-to-back top safety picks 2020 and 2021. Pedestrian automatic emergency braking is the latest IIHS requirement needed to, to earn top pickup safety ratings. And Ram's technology, which got an advanced rating, builds on the truck's camera plus radar sensor fusion automatic emergency braking system. Important thing for fleet owners, safety, and uh, here's some technology that can advance your program. Yeah, so number eight is another truck-related story, and it deals with Ford issuing safety recalls for 2020-2021 F-150 pickups. And so the recall is due to correct windshield adhesion concerns and incorrect payload information, which affects 79,000 vehicles in the U.S. and federal territories, almost 7,000 vehicles in Canada, and almost 1,400 vehicles in Mexico. So these affected vehicles, they don't comply with federal motor safety standards, and owners will start being notified uh, the week of April 6th. So if you have one of these vehicles, you might want to check out the story to see if your vehicle is impacted. Yeah, number seven on the list is five ways drones bring value on construction and engineering projects. This is the first of drone stories in this list. They had a lot of drone interest this week. If your engineering or construction company is evaluating drone adoption or expansion, these are some top factors. Drones value is pretty convincing if you're comparing it to helicopter or airplane flights. But even if you've gotten value out of traditional aerial photography before, there are a number of values drones can deliver at much lower cost that you really should consider, including things like drone data being offering new insights not captured before, improvements in worker safety on some really risky tasks, and and a whole lot more. Check this story out. So the number six story is New York utilities take delivery of construction industry's first electric backhoe loader. So at Con Expo, which is really hard to believe it was almost a year ago, case they unveiled Project Zeus, which was the construction industry's first fully electric backhoe loader. And this week, case announced that the delivery and implementation of two of these electric powered backhoes have been implemented by utilities in the state of New York. So these zero emission machines, they can be charged by any 220 volt connection. They're capable of supporting most common eight hour workdays. So pretty neat equipment. Yeah, and pretty interesting that they're putting it out on project sites already. So number five on the list is uh, six factors to consider when adding drones to your construction business. And here's a story that one of our contributors put together for us that rounds up insights of some tech experts on what construction companies wanting to add unmanned aerial vehicles to their business plan should look for. Drones are providing needed views that are inaccessible or otherwise too risky and expensive to capture by other means. And they're they're offering a far more frequent monitoring of construction progress. Drone data is integrated with other construction applications and autonomous flights are are just around the corner now. So you can really increase the frequency of that progress measuring. So check this story out for some real interesting hints from both technology providers and contractors who are using the technology. So uh, Jones was a hot topic in the news this week, and so is infrastructure. I feel like infrastructure is in the news every week lately as Biden keeps talking about his Build Back Better plan and how that's going to unfold. But as the latest coronavirus relief bill is to the Senate, experts say that infrastructure funding is going to be the next item on the congressional agenda. And a senior advisor to President Biden said there's going to be a hard push coming on an infrastructure stimulus once this American Rescue Plan gets passed. So 
Uh, last week, the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, they took some big bipartisan first steps towards passing an infrastructure bill as the nation's surface transportation program. It's going to expire September 30th, so they have to do something before then. And the committee, they hopes to agree on a package by Memorial Day, and that will give all summer for the full Senate and House to pass this bill. So we are continuing to cover infrastructure funding, so stay tuned to our website for that. Yeah, great job on that work, Jess, especially with this administration change. There's just so much going on. It's, I feel like it's all I do is cover infrastructure <laughs> funding, but I'm, we're hopeful that it's going to happen soon. We have bipartisan support and just hopefully sooner rather than later. Right, right. So number three is one of those great uh, project stories, Arizona grain slip form silo construction requiring a nine day long continuous war. The basic numbers on this are pretty interesting. It's 24 silos, 21 feet in diameter, 140 feet tall, and a nine day continuous pour. Check the details out on this story. It's pretty cool. So the number two story has to do with how to evaluate and troubleshoot concrete cracks. So it's really not a secret that cracks are going to happen in concrete, just like asphalt and cracks are pretty much inevitable. But regardless of what is required by the specification, when cracks do happen, they need to be investigated before designing or performing repairs. And that's going to determine if the crack is the first sign of a serious trouble, indicating the load carrying capacity of the structure. And you're going to want to see if it's been jeopardized or if there was a construction error. So this article, it really has some recommendations for troubleshooting concrete cracks prior to designing and performing the repair. All right. And number one on the list this week, not surprisingly, is how new PPP rules make that free money available to the smallest businesses and sole proprietors even. The Biden administration's focus on small businesses has sort of assured that sole proprietors and, and businesses with fewer than 20 employees got a great shot at getting either a first or even a second forgivable PPP loan with this most recent tranche of money that was actually authorized in December by the previous administration. There have just been some minor tweaks in, in how this money is being administered with set-asides for businesses with less than 20 employees. I stumbled on a really interesting video of a conversation between two people that are experts in helping people get PPP loans. And I was really impressed by the fact that the that they said that there were an awful lot of people who got turned away in the first rounds, mostly because lenders were overwhelmed with the, the sort of blitz for money back in April when this program started. And I think the most important thing about this story is don't let that discourage you. You know, go back, even if you're a sole proprietor, even if you don't have payroll, you can get money to pay yourself with these, these loans. And forgiveness is much more clear now. So the questions that you may not have been able to answer definitively or almost certainly you can get answers for them. And the reality is, is that even if you can't get forgiveness, terms on repayment is 1% and a five-year period to repay. It's the cheapest money you could possibly borrow. So it's a great story and a great program. You know, hope you'll uh, check that story out. And thanks so much. That's our list for the week. Thanks so much, Jess. Thank you, Larry. Have a great week. You too. And we hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll see you next week.